For this project, I chose to focus on teaching online classes. I chose this topic because I was a student at an online high school, so I was interested in the teaching side of it. Also, teaching online has been a huge deal over this past year, so I think it's important to have some insight on how to teach effectively in a virtual setting in case you ever need to. There are several benefits to students taking online classes. When learning asynchronously, students have more time to formulate their responses and can share their ideas without interruption from other students. Teachers can also give lots of individual feedback to every student. Students are able to practice writing out their responses for others to read instead of the real-time verbal communication. Finally, virtual classes can serve a variety of students who may have unique circumstances or needs that make attending school at a brick and mortar school difficult. There are also challenges that come with teaching virtually. Since you aren't in one room together, it can be difficult to have students collaborate and work together on activities. It is also much easier for students to become distracted. There is a delay in communication whenever you are working synchronously. Even if you respond an hour later, this will slow them down if they feel like they can't move on without your feedback or assistance. We will discuss some strategies that will address challenges in teaching online. As with an in-person class, you must be intentional in the way you design it. Keep in mind the challenges and barriers such as communication and engagement. You must purposefully include opportunities and platforms for student interaction. As with an in-person class, it is not enough to simply have students watch lectures. There are many aspects of an online class that must be thought out that are similar or different than planning for a face-to-face -face class. When including interactive tools for class, it is important to choose ones that offer different levels of complexity, multiple entry points, and options for different representations. This gives students flexibility when engaging in the mathematics. While choosing tools and technology for your classroom, keep in mind the purpose that it will serve. It doesn't do you or your students any good to have the newest technology if it does nothing to help your instructional goals. As I mentioned earlier, one of the great challenges of teaching online is having students collaborate. However, working together and sharing ideas is an important part of learning mathematics. Discussion boards are a great way to have students communicate asynchronously. Use open-ended questions that allow students to have mathematical discussions. While working synchronously, breakout rooms allow students to communicate in real time in small groups where they may feel more comfortable sharing. It is also important to make sure you are sufficiently communicating to your students and their parents. You need to provide lots of meaningful feedback to further student learning. Providing clear instructions and expectations from the beginning can help decrease the amount of communication needed between you and your students and can help them be more productive. Finally, make sure your students and parents know how they can get in touch with you. More than just communicating with each other, students need to be able to see each other's work. Students can take screenshots of their work for you to share while keeping the student's name anonymous. You can make student work visible on your main platform that you use for your class so students can access it themselves. One reason why open-ended questions are important is so student contributions that are shared publicly don't just become answer keys for other students. When designing an online class, keep equity and access in mind. During synchronous learning, provide questions and information orally and typed for students to be able to read. Then provide both recordings and transcripts of the lessons. Consider the technology you plan to use for a class and be aware of the level of tech skills needed and the cost of any tools that may be a barrier for some students. Finally, be aware if certain groups of students are engaging with the activities more. If so, you'll want to reevaluate how accessible your activities are.